<laughs> Excellent. Oh, Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Can you see my screen okay? Mm. Yes, I can. Good. Hi, Carla. I'm yep. Alex Ruscio, one of the one of the clinical for Meds IQ. Welcome. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Um, yes, I can see your screen, so that's oh, good. It's amazing. It's amazing when the IT works. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't be surprised. I'm not. I'm never surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, never used. I've never used this before, so it's quite cool, actually. It is. It's very good, and it does allow people to. Um, people who just phone in and people who can um people can write messages up to you while you're talking and then you can address oh, that's them good. yeah so it is it's quite when it works it's good but it does things like it automatically starts in mute quite often yeah yeah um, so that's a bit frustrating um so what well just while everybody's logging on should we just wait a minute and see if we get some more sure. attendees yeah, sure. Um, and then we never quite know how Hello, many people. Hello, it. It's Jane. Oh, Jane, hello. Hi. How exciting. Hi, guys. Well, I don't know how long I'll last, but I, it pops up on my phone and it's an opportune moment. So I thought, oh, I'll come and say hello. Oh, how but exciting to hear from you. How are things? <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, Aaron's a month today. So, or yesterday, actually. Yep. So we're, wow. we're, um, we're fine, actually. Getting on well. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it's so nice to hear from you. So we've got the RCPCH team. We've got Kasha, we've got Carla, we've got Peter Mark, we've got me, we've got Jane, and we've got Tola Lidi. Anyone else? I think people will probably be joining as we go along, which usually happens. Yes. Um, okay. Perfect. Well, why don't we just get make, make a slow start then with just a sort of general um, introductions as we're a smallish group, and then as people come in, um, we can add more, and then we can get to the core content. So, yeah, my, my name is Alice Ruscio. I'm one of I'm a general paediatric consultant in London, and also one of the clinical leads um, for Meds IQ. Um, and Jane, who has styled in, which is brilliant, is the other clinical lead. Mm -hmm. um, Hi, I'm Jane. I'm a paediatrician at the Royal Free, um, but currently on maternity leave. So apologies if mm. I disappear, but um, I'm really interested to hear all about this. So thank you. Yes, so we've, okay. we're really l lucky today to have Carla Brown um, talking to us about eBug, um, which is um, a resource uh, around supporting knowledge about uh, microbes and antimicrobial therapy for young people. Um, mm -hmm. But I'll let Carla um, introduce, uh, Carla, why don't you introduce yourself and the project a little more? Sure. So um, I've just realised that I've not put my name on the title slide. So hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, it's been a weird few weeks. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Carla, Dr. Carla Brown. Um, I'm the project manager for eBug, which is operated by Public Health England. So I'm a microbiologist and I've recently turned into a media educator in this field. Um, and, yeah, and, today I'm just going to be, um, and yeah, today I'm just going to be talking you through about eBug, how it was developed, what our resources are, and um, what kind of things we do to encourage implementation in schools in the community. Um, yeah. Um, excellent. That, so just before we start, just um, other attendees. Um, so Peter Mark, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Can I, sorry, can I just ask him? Yes, of course. Sorry. In the background. I think, the line uh, is not clear. Uh, Peter Mark, you know? Sorry. Oh, I'm a pediatric consent. Oh. Sorry, can I just... Pediatric consent is in Manchester. So leads the um, collaborative for making it safer together and uh, harm reduction, basically, in paediatric healthcare. Brilliant, thank you. I think there's a little bit of interference. Um, yes, there was. <laughs> for, for, for people at the moment. I think that actually, I'm not sure that the interference was coming from Peter Mark. I think it may have been coming from another call. Um, uh, but 
let's yeah it seems to have calmed down a bit um uh, yes yeah, so um any other introductions my name is Tola Uliide, I'm the Senior Prescribing Advisor at um, Greenwich CCG. I take the antimicrobial lead for the CCG, so um, mm. that's why I'm here. <laughs> and I've been, involved, uh -huh, I've been involved in you know, the European um, Antimicrobial Awareness Week um, in our CCG and trying, we're trying hard to get into schools, but normally because we work in conjunction with public health in our team, um, they usually have access to schools. So sometimes access is qu quite challenging, you know, with regards um, to publicizing it to students and things. Um, that's why I want to just know if there's any other thing we could do or strategies that are in place or what other people have done to sort of promote this e-bug um, situation um, into schools. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Fantastic. So this is really, really mm. relevant and, and brilliant because actually certainly for those of us that are based in hospital healthcare, um, we're, I don't know, I'm very much aware of how difficult it is for us to reach schools and the education side of things. So it'll be really mm -hmm. interesting to, to learn a bit more about that and have your your insight. Thank you. Uh, thanks, okay. Tola. Um, so then I've also got Sharon Gardner. I can see mm -hmm. um, has signed up. Hi, Sharon. Hi, uh, you're right. Yes, hello. Are you happy to introduce yourself? Um, I'm a PJ and E consultant from Ormskirk in the northwest. Oh, brilliant! Welcome. Great to have you. Great to have you with us today. I hope that today will be um, useful. Um, and Joe McCann, I can see, has popped up as a name. Joe, can you hear us? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Brilliant. Hi. Hi. I'm Joe McCann. I'm a paediatric pharmacist in Belfast. Brilliant. Welcome. Welcome today. Um, any other people out there? Because not everybody's name comes up on the list. Perfect. In that case, I think we'll we'll get started. So welcome. So this is, I feel like I should be able to tell you, Kasha, what number of web webinar are we on today? How many? Alice, I really can't, I really can't tell, but uh, I think it's uh, definitely <laughs> over, you know, between 15 and 20, I would, I would venture a guess. So since we've started MedsIQ, actually, the webinars have been um, almost a, a surprise hit, actually, I think because webinars are still quite new. We weren't quite sure what the uptake would be like, but actually we've kept these going bi-monthly since we started. And we've really covered some very interesting and quite wide ranging topics related to paediatric medication safety. Um, we always have a, a varying um, uh, group on the telephone but um, we've really raised some interesting discussions and it's gone forwards to shape some of the um, RCPCH medicines committee strategy and some working groups so it's it's this has been such a useful um, format so thank you for joining us and for keeping it going um, because as we've always said about meds IQ we are only as good as the people who um, uh, as, as our community really um, so we're yeah we're very excited today to have um, to, to share eBug. We're particularly keen to look at different resources that are out there to actually support um, young people and, and families in in medication safety. And this, obviously, by being aimed at young people, very much does that. So I think what I will do now is hand over to um, Carla to t to tell us about um, to tell us about eBug. Sure. Thanks. Um... So today, the way I've structured it, structured it is a very sort of standard PowerPoint, but kind of listening now to the aims of your sessions, like, please feel free to stop me. If you have any specific questions, you know, I think that's much more val valuable to discuss. So stop me at any point and I'm happy to answer any questions. So eBug um, is a pan-European health education resource, as you rightly said, on microbes and antibiotics. Um, but, you know, we do stretch far wider. We're, we're also used in Saudi Arabia, India, um, and some of the other countries around Asia. So it's very exciting. And, you know, I think in the future, we've got really great things to come as our website develops and our games develop. So 
So I'm going to move, I think. Oh, oh, don't want to do that. Sorry, I'm just uh, figuring out how to change the slide. Screen. <laughs> Sorry, am I being really silly and not knowing how to? Oh, here we go. That's why. Um, okay, so I just wanted to start you off with a quick introduction to eBug and really get you as excited about the project as I am. Um, so eBug is a health resource for 4 to 18 year olds and it was originally established in 2006 by the Health Protection Agency um, but it's now operated by PHE and eBug really formulates and you know is part of the PHE five-year plan against antimicrobial resistance and um, so it was originally developed on the back of a DJ Sanko grant um, which was an EU grant. So although it started off as a, Euro a European project, it's really just expanded. So I feel like this is an audience that I don't really need to emphasise this point for. I mean, education of antibiotic resistance is so important. We know it's such a massive health problem in today's society. And again, it is really um, part of PHE's national strategy. So with the five-year plan. So with young people, again, I don't want to emphasise this too much, but young people are going to be our future generation of anti uh, antibiotic users. So any new drugs that we're developing now are going to be utilised by kids. So we really need to educate them on what microbes are, on what infections are, on how you should use antibiotics effectively. In addition to this, kids are a massive sort of resource of infections and antibiotic use. So if we're reducing childhood infections, by educating them on hygiene, then we can also reduce antibiotic use. So it's such an important target audience. So eBug was developed in 2006, as I said, with the DJ Sanko grant. And really, I just want to emphasize that a lot of work went into this project. So a needs assessment was carried out across 10 partner European countries. And this really involved an investigation and assessment of the national curriculums to look at how antibiotics were being taught, how hand hygiene was being taught, and what the gaps were. So it was really identified through focus group teachers that we needed these resources. There was a massive gap, but they wanted them to link to the national curriculum. So rather than just having, you know, sporadic resources that talked on antibiotics, they needed to link to science and biology. And they really had to be adaptable and have IT links. So that's why we've got the website. And of course, student friendly. So a lot of the things you'll see in eBug are really fun and really engaging. And we make sure that we can really, you know, relate and we we really engage and relate to students in different sort of areas. So these were kind of the 10 countries. So this amazing kind of project resulted in our first eBug packs. Can I ask, has anyone seen these packs or used these packs before? I've seen some on the PAT website. Yeah. Um, I think are they, I think it's the one the RCGP websites. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we've never used it because we haven't really had access to sort of promote school. it in schools. Yeah. 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 Um, well, so these these were our first two packs. So the yellow one is our junior pack, and which is mm. key stage two, and then our our blue pack is our senior pack. And these were really mm. exciting. So these have been sent out to all schools across England. Okay. Um, and they really, as have I they said, been sent? Or are they about to be sent? And uh, no, they have been sent. Yeah, they were sent in okay. 2010 and then 2015. But um, mm. afterwards, we can talk offline about you getting access to these because they're free mm. for everyone to use. So you know what we do at eBug is our team is very interdisciplinary. So not only are we microbiologists, we're educators and we're researchers. So mm -hmm. all resources that we develop, we evaluate to make sure mm -hmm. that they're effective at education. So the PACs were evaluated in three partner countries in 2009 and 2010, and really wanted to question on knowledge change and student enjoyment. So we've done um, questionnaires before the lesson, after the lesson, and then six weeks after to show retention. And this was really, really exciting. So we were able to show that the PACs were effective at teaching because there wasn't any significant de uh, decrease in student knowledge. And then there was also retention of knowledge in the senior PACs different countries. 
but the most important thing is the kids loved it the students loved it the teachers loved it so if you look on the bottom left you can see we asked about their perceptions of using the pack and you know it's majority the students were positive they enjoyed it and it was using activities that were really relevant to them so i will invite you guys after this webinar to check out some of these publications one of them you can see on the bottom right that's um donna lecky she was my predecessor so have a look and you can see just what our strategies are for evaluating them and this kind of formative evaluation is really what helped gain us the endorsement from nice in 2016. so the ebug resources we've got tons and tons so i've picked a few of our key resources to kind of talk to you guys about today so i've introduced the junior and senior packs which were developed in 2009 and in a minute i'll talk more about the topics that's covered in them but really ebug have expand, expanded over the last few years to make sure that we're able to target different ages so in 2011 and um, we made the online science show so this is on our website and basically this is a little bunch of animations and games that are really accessible and linked to the national curriculum for these younger students on antibiotics hygiene and um, washing your hands and food hygiene as well and then in 2014-15 and um, what we done is we made young adult packs that focus on antibiotic antibiotic resistance and vaccinations and these were also developed on the website as well and these are targeted targeted at 15 to 18 year olds so this content's a lot more complex there's a lot more scientific inquiry based learning it really focuses on more cellular interactions with vaccinations and antibiotics and what we've been doing with these resources is testing them in a peer education environment as well which i'll talk about later but yeah, so we have a wide range of resources. All of them are free to use. They're all developed under Creative Commons, which means that you can take them, adapt them, use them in different ways, change words, change pictures. And um, so it's a really nice open source resource that you know has been going since 2006, which is, so we actually had a, a conversation a few weeks ago with the, the European Commission, and they said the eBug is one of their most successful projects off of a DJ Sanko grant. So, I mean, that's mm. just great news. So just to map out the topics in more detail. So with the junior and senior pack, so they're the core ones that I talked about. These are the segments that we cover. So you can see in junior, we have microorganisms, the spread of infection and the prevention of infection and antibiotics. The senior is very similar, but what we do in senior is we also add content on sexual health and sexual hygiene. So we've talked about chlamydia as well as a separate lesson. And then we also talk about food hygiene. So the reason they're in red is we're currently making some changes to them with um, a new project that we're doing called Safe Consume. And then again, with the young adults, you can see it's more focused on antibiotics and vaccinations. Mm -hmm. So what's really interesting for this is all of our lessons. So you'll see that there's like one, two, three, four segments, and then each little segment subsection within that as a lesson, they all link to the national curriculum. So it means that teachers don't have to invent lessons. You know, they can be used as a supplement to biology or science or PSHE um, or the Scottish or Welsh equ equivalent. So yeah, they can they fit in really nicely, which is great. And to be honest, if you're ever going to want to do work in schools, you need to make sure that your your lesson or your assembly really fits with the national curriculum. Because I think teachers they're not really interested if it doesn't. Because of time, no one has any time anymore. Um, so one thing that's really exciting for eBug is although it's great to have these packs and you know they're free and they're cool and they're fun we really need to think of novel ways to implement them you know it's not enough for us just to give these to teachers we need to we need to give teachers a tool or some methodology to use them so what we've been doing recently is exploring the use of peer education so i.e having kids teaching each other having students teaching other students and we have two models for this so this is the first model that we done in 2012 so we worked with secondary school students and taught them on our science show content that i mentioned earlier which covers respiratory hygiene hand hygiene antibiotics microbes 
So they trained on that lesson and then they went into um, primary schools and delivered it to primary school students. And it was great, it was so engaging. They communicated it in ways that were relevant to their peers, they were really excited. And through this, we measure knowledge change as well. So we've got a few publications on peer education and um, you can also find a lot of information on our website about that. Um, and then recently we've been exploring a second model, which is very exciting, that focuses on antibiotics only. So for this, we've had medical students at Cardiff University and pharmacy students at Manchester University train on an antibiotic resistance lesson. And then they've went into high schools and delivered that lesson to six to 18 year old biology students. And then those students have delivered that lesson to non-science peers within the school. And again, this has been very exciting because they're communicating these really, you know, quite complex scientific topics in really fun and relevant ways. And for that model, we, you know, we do pre, so we do a pre-test. So before the lesson, we measure their knowledge. We measure their knowledge after the lesson and then we measure their knowledge three months later. So that those that data is still coming in, but stay tuned for some papers on that. So these models can be really useful. And again, if anyone's interested in using peer education, just reach out to us. We're happy to help or offer, you know, share the lessons that we already have developed. So the bugs, this could be something actually that could be really relevant for you guys. So Beat the Bugs is our, our brand, our, our newish resource. I keep wanting to say it's brand new, but I don't think you can say that for like two years. Um, so it was developed in 2016. And what, it's, what is different about Beat the Bugs is it's targeted at the community rather than schools. So it's far less academic. In our school packs, they're, you know, they have very sort of similar structure. You have the background knowledge, the learn objectives, the lesson plan and the activity. Whereas in Beat the Bugs, it's all very short, fun activities. And we don't really do lesson plans or learn objectives. So we wanted this course to basically be the best of, e uh, best of e bug. So we collaborated with a community group in Gloucester called Kingfisher, and we made this pack. And the pack's really great because it covers six different topics on microbes, food hygiene, oral hygiene, antibiotics, and self-care. Um, so this pack was piloted with two community groups. So it was piloted with young mums and it was piloted with adults with learning disabilities. And we looked at pre and post tests and we saw knowledge change, which is really exciting. So what we're doing now with Beat the Bugs is we've got a PhD student coming in from the Open University who's going to evaluate it form uh, formally with different community groups and also develop a new evaluation tool that we can use with all of our resources. But Beat the Bugs is great if you want to go into the public or go into the schools for the day and just carry out some fun activities. It's really easy to pick up. You don't require a lot of equipment. There's not a lot, a lot of background reading required. So yeah, I would definitely advise you guys to have a look at Beat the Bugs. Um, and that again is all on our website as well. So the eBug website, I think what I'm gonna do is rather than use slides, I'm gonna just try and open the eBug website. So can everyone just let me know if this is happening or not? everyone see that okay yeah yeah so has anyone looked at the ebug website before that no. yes i have okay so one one yes everyone else no yeah so this is the ebug website and um, so what i will say is all the content that i've talked about so far can be found on this website and you can break it down into little chunks so what we do is we have a teacher website and a student website, which are really different, and um, which I'll explain in a second. And excitingly, as I showed you, our website is available in, I think it's 26 different languages now. So for example, let's just say I'm French, I want to have a look, I click the French, boom. Um, so all our content has been translated. And this is really exciting because it means that our content has been implemented across Europe and in different sort of countries, which is what we want. So the, the e, I think it was ECDC that funded the translations in 2014. Um, 
which is really exciting. So yeah, so what I'll do is I'll talk you through the teacher website first. So we have our junior, senior and young adult. I'm going to go in junior first. So the pack that I showed you is very sort of, it's very thick and there's a lot of information. But what the website does is it breaks it up. So you can download the full pack by simply clicking the download thing here. That gives you the full pack as a digital version. If you do want a hard copy version, again, reach out to us. We're happy to send that. But you know, it's quite, it's quite nice to have it digital. You can just kind of flip through. This is our junior pack, so lots of fun activities. Um, but what we do on our website is we break everything down. So rather than having the whole pack, you can pick which lesson. Let's pick antibiotics. And then you can just quite simply pick, uh, download the antibiotic pack. So that's a lot shorter. Back. So the teacher website, as you can see, is full of lessons, packs, educational content, activity, worksheets, everything that a teacher can use to deliver on these um, specific segments of the content. However, on the student website, it's very different. So we'll go on junior again. The student website is supposed to be interactive and fun, and this is really a place that students and kids and youths can come and learn about these really amazing concepts in a really fun way. So we have a disease fact file, which have lots of different um, diseases and the microbes that, they, that are caused. We have a revision guide as well. So this relates to the lessons that I just showed you on the teacher website. And then our, our most successful thing that we have is our games. So we have different games that have been developed over the last four years. These are our most recent developed ones. So Stop the Spread teaches on respiratory hygiene. Let's see if I can play it. <laughs> so yeah, this is a really good game. It's showing how you have to like catch sneezes. Oh my God, catching the tissue, catching the tissue. <laughs> so yeah, this is really fun. Um, put that in the bin. So yeah, this was um, developed with a game development company just near Gloucester as well. and. Stop the Spread and Body Busters have been evaluated recently, so we're going to be publishing on that to see if they can improve knowledge on respiratory hygiene. And Body Busters is on antibiotics, so that's really great. And then one other thing I just want to show you as well, so our young adult site, I'll quickly pop on that. You can see is very, very different to the junior student site. You've got videos, you've got animations, coursework and revision, patient stories. And then what we do here is we have our peer education and our community resources. So this is where you can go on the Beat the Bugs website and you can download, let's just say I'll go to antibiotics again, Bug Busters. So this is our Beat the Bugs resources. And then, yeah, there's also peer education resources. So, yeah, the website is really, really easy to walk through and everything, everything that we have is on this website. So yeah, does anyone oh, does anyone have any questions? Ah, <laughs> does anyone have any questions on the website at all? Nope. No. Okay. Just walk through this. Yeah. So um, with the website, I will say we we actually just received. Um, funding to redevelop it over the next two years so we're going to be doing focus groups with students and educators technologists developers and health professionals so if anyone's interested in being involved in that please let me know because we need as many you know participants as possible to ensure that our website is relevant and we're delivering the right information okay. so activities so this is going to be something that is really going to excite you and inspire you for future use of ebug. So ebug activities. So what I want to talk to you through today is four sort of segments that we really try and, and um, encourage schools to do because it gives a really nice overview of infections and well infection control and prevention. So I'm going to talk you through some activities that we have on microbes, an activity that we have on respiratory hygiene, food hygiene and then also antibiotics and then hopefully you guys can maybe go away and think about how you can use these in your different settings 
and then we can for any questions that you have for that. So the introduction to microbe activities. Um, so this is currently currently being ruled out in South Gloss Council. It's going to be ruled out in Gloss Council and Liverpool Council and Birmingham. So we've been doing train the trainer workshops with public health practitioners and local authorities to train them on these activities which they're doing in schools. So what we do for introduction to microbes is in supplementation with the packs and the lessons that I showed you, we have these four engaging activities. So on your bottom left is an activity that we call make your own microbes. So this is really fun. We basically just get kids, we get Play-Doh and plasticine and we print out pictures of different microbes. So you could print out like a gram stain or even go down to like a, a scanning electron microscope, like a really close image or like I even get those giant microbes cuddly toys and you can get kids to design their own microbes. So you can see here in that picture, you've got streptococcus, you can see the chains of cocci there. And then I think that's, I think that's supposed to be, a, I think it's penicillin on the top left. But yeah, this is really fun and it gets kids engaged and it shows them that microbes are really, really different. I think, you know, the problem that we have right now is the, the, per, the perception that the media have sort of portrayed around microbes, calling them germs, making them seem really negative, also kind of grouping them as a single entity, when we know that they're so diverse and there's so many different types. So this activity can really be good at sort of breaking through that barrier and letting kids understand that, oh my God, they look really cool. Um, so on the back of that, we have our Top Trumps card game. So has, has, has anyone not heard of Top Trumps? Everyone must have heard of Top Trumps. It's like a. <laughs> I think we have. <laughs> I really worry. <laughs> Although apparently, so when I talk to people in America and Europe about this, they're kind of like, eh? I think it's a British thing. But anyway, um, so we have our microbe Trumps game. We're actually currently in the process of getting that professionally printed. So if you do want to use it, now is the time we can send you some really nice swanky boxes of it. So this game's really good. We have lots of different microbes. We have viruses, fungi, bacteria, and they've all got different stats. So they'll be like danger to humans, antibiotic resistance, and you can play, you know, the class can play each other or anyone that's kind of, if you're doing it at a public event or a science festival event. And this is again really good at breaking down those barriers that microbes are all dangerous because on the card we also have usefulness to humans we have like you know different scores for that on the the right we have like a magazine microbes activity that we do and this can be really good for communities or more kind of creative workshops where you can get kids or you know anyone really to design their design a collage that has pictures of places that microbes can be or exist or are found showing that they're everywhere and then we have what microbe am i so these are some really engaging worksheets within our activity packs that i showed you that have some really nice analogies so there's one about microbe sizes so like if a human was the size of the planet then like a fungus would be the size of a football pitch and a bacteria would be the size of a bus and the virus would be the size of a football so yeah just these fun little analogies that you can use so does anyone have any questions on these activities or any ideas of how they might be able to implement or use these no and i think from, from the from from our point of view these would be really good we, when we have various kind of engagement events where um children and young people come up to the hospital um mm -hmm. and we often try and do a bit of health education and again also the hospital school and stuff could be using this mm -hmm. um so because we don't have as much reach into the schools although i think it'd be brilliant if they were all doing this um yeah. but no they look brilliant really well thought out great yeah, well, don't, I'll leave some time at the end so we can maybe brainstorm some ideas of how to move forward. Um, and then, so this is my favourite. So we have an amazing activity on respiratory hygiene that we call Snot Gun. 
And um, we've also been rebranding it for the Big Bang Fair in Birmingham, and we're calling it Bogey Busters. <laughs> um, so this is really fun. It teaches all about sneezing and how you have to cover your your hand, uh, cover your nose when you sneeze in your mouth. So we basically have a, a spray bottle that we fill with green food coloring and water, and then we cover it with like a, a Shrek mask. So we say that Shrek's, Shrek's very unwell. And then we get kids to like say, oh my God, like Shrek's really unwell. Can you guess how far he can sneeze? And then we talk about how far sneeze travels and then we get them to, you know, and then we make him sneeze on the sneeze runway. And then we reproduce the act, we repeat the activity again with like covering it with a glove and then using a tissue as well. But this is really, really fun. It's so visual. It shows just how snot, you know, as it travels so far. And sometimes you can put glitter in it to sort of represent microbes. Um, and this is what we do in our senior pack is we also get the kids to like measure how far the sneeze travels with each variable. So no hand, hand and hand with tissue. And then they can plot graphs so it can link into mathematics as well. So yeah, but this is this is such a, an amazing activity. It always turns a lot of heads when we do it at events. We actually done it in so Shire Hall in Gloucester. We're doing flu vaccines for local authorities. And we came and done that with all the patients. It was really fun. Um, and again, it's it's so cheap. Teachers can just get a spray bottle from B like from B and Q for like a pound get a mask cheap on the internet so really accessible and then we have our food hygiene activities so our food hygiene activities are in our senior packs and our beat the bugs packs so this project is really important to us right now because we're currently collaborating with 13 different countries across europe in a project called safe consume and safe consume aims to reduce the health burden from foodborne illness through education, communication and food policy, food safety policy. So we're developing some new resources for that. So we've really been thinking about these. So we cover, you know, different sort of um, ob learning objectives in this relating to fridge, so storage, where you should store your foods, what kind of foods go bad, labels, and we also have an amazing activity called How Clean Is Your Kitchen? So what we do there is, um, has anyone ever used like the UV gel that you do for like hand hygiene activities? Or has anyone seen that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like yeah. you can get the UV torch. So we, we get um, Play-Doh, which we put the UV gel in and we tell the kids that's raw chicken. But we obviously we don't tell them that we've put the gel in it. And then we get them to make a sandwich, just as they would normally do with raw chicken, get them to cook it in the oven, cups and vegetables. And then we get the torch out after so they can see just like how contaminated everything is. And it really reinforces, you know, the importance of hand washing. But that's a, that's a fantastic activity as well. So we're, we're going to be doing that at that Big Bang Fair in Birmingham as well. And this is just a little worksheet of refrigerators. We're like guess where the egg goes and where does the chicken go and and then we explain why you have to put things where they should be because i think a lot a lot of people don't really know about putting like meat near the bottom so and you know a lot of people put milk on the door as well and this is our label sort activity so we've um we've been doing focus groups recently with school kids um, on food hygiene and something that's came out of it is they really don't have good understanding between the difference of use by and best before which is quite interesting and um, so yes yeah, so we have a, a label sort activity where they can map the label to the definition so the other thing i want to talk to you about is um antibiotics or antibiotic activities so we have a wide range of activities ranging from experimental activities using petri dishes and food coloring to um, comic strips and scenario based activities so you can see at the bottom we've got antibiotics right or wrong but our favorite thing that we do on antibiotic resistance is our balloon activity and um, which we think is such a good way to explain amr so really, you know, when we try and talk about AMR to kids, it can be quite daunting and quite complicated because it is based on, you know, genetic variants. If you're a younger child and you've not studied genetics before in school, it's kind of like, and also I think a lot of kids, it's, it's hard for them to understand it's the bacteria that's resistant, not actually the humans. So what we do, um, so I have a video for this, but I'm not 
I'm not going to try and play it because every time I do that it, it lags and doesn't come through properly but I'll <laughs> get um I'll share the YouTube thing as well so we we basically have balloons and we get a balloon just for example you can take that on that picture there a yellow balloon and we get a pen and we say so why why would you take antibiotics when do you take antibiotics and the kids are usually like uh, you know when I'm not well when I'm sick I'm like yeah when you're sick because you take them to kill bacteria so then you get the pen and you pop the balloon you're like antibiotics kill bacteria but then you say but some bacteria can be resistant to antibiotics which means they have like a special power or quality that means that the pins can't kill them anymore so then we use like electric tape and when there's electric tape, tape on a balloon the pen will like pierce it but the balloon won't pop so you're able to show that this special quality that the bacteria has stops it from being killed by antibiotics. And you can take this, you know, activity in tons of different ways. So you can buy like big, long, you like the, the long sort of thin balloons to represent E. coli and like circular balloons to represent MRSA. You can get the kids to like give the resistant gene a name, design their balloons so this can like we love this activity it's really fun and really creative and so visual um, and this these activities are included in our beat the bugs pack as well which is really great but we're always you know we're always on the the lookout for new things that we can do so one thing that we done last year during antibiotic awareness week is we collaborated with we the curious science museum in bristol and done an activity called Poo Lab, which we had like brown Play-Doh to represent poo. And we used red and green glitter to represent good and bad bacteria. And we had like four patient samples. So healthy patient who had nice poo and lots of green bacteria, lots of healthy bacteria. Then a patient that had an infection, so bad poo, so we kind of made diarrhea. And then red glitter, and then we had like the effect of antibiotics on it so that you know we were, we're trying to publish that as an activity as well but i just want to ask like how does everyone has anyone else got some methods that they'd like to share on how they educate on antibiotics even with the public or patients not just use how do people communicate this problem not very well i think <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I think, well, certainly in the hospital, we tend to use sort of standard information sheets um, and things like that. It, we don't often have the kind of the time or the capacity to do the more detailed things, but these are really, you know, inspiring different yeah. ideas. So do you find it quite difficult to communicate this? Like just, I mean, just like with words or metaphors, do you like find it quite difficult? Yeah, I, th I think. We, I think it's probably a bit about the kind of the, the space and the scope of, of what we're doing. Um, yeah. But it just makes me think we could be, we could be inviting, you know, we've got lots of children who are inpatient at any one time or visiting through A and E and we could uh, through outpatients and we could be we could have activities like this and they could be sort of playing, yeah. um, uh, and enjoying. Yeah. Um, so actually, we're um. So I'm currently collaborating with these amazing group of CCGs in Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire? Sorry, I'm Scottish. Mm. I can never pronounce. <laughs> so I just moved here recently, so I'm still getting to grips with the geography. But um, yeah, we're collaborating with them to devise a new model for how they're going to educate youths on antibiotic resistance during Antibiotic Awareness Week. So if anyone is interested in that project, please give us an email because we'll be happy to share that model. Um, because they are very much the same you know they want to do the stuff they don't have time they can't get into schools so we are going to sit and try and brainstorm with them so yeah so that is actually one thing i would like to say about ebug although we have these resources you know our job is to help you guys if you want to do this stuff you know give me a call like let's let's arrange a meeting like let's brainstorm together that's my role within this position so you know never be afraid to reach out um, just to kind of round things off I'll, quite quickly so we have some time for questions or discussion or comments. So as I said, eBug has now got partners all across the world, which is really exciting. We're always on the lookout for new partners. So this kind of infographic shows what partner has a live website and which kind of countries don't. 
Really excitingly, we've just been translating our content into Tamil and Hindi, so two Indian languages. So, you know, eVlog is going to be implemented in India, which is, you know, one of the biggest antibiotic users in the world. So this is just immensely amazing. We can't wait for that. We have our website visit measured using Google Analytics. And um, so if you look on the bottom kind of table, you can see our biggest users. So UK and France have always been very popular. Hungary over the last year has dropped, but they've always been a top user. And something that we're you know, really interested in is the United States are always in the top four, but we don't have a partner in the USA. So you know, maybe that's something we should definitely think about investigating. But overall, we get about 130,000 visits. So that's unique visits, not repeated visits to the website each year. So around 130,000 users. And what we do hope is this new website development that we're going to be investigating will really boost that. Our website isn't overly compatible on phones or iPads, and that's something that I really want to fix and change because 12% of our users are actually mobile users, which is very telling. We should be doing something. <laughs> um, so just a quick timeline. So you know, we were launched in the UK in 2006 and quickly gained approval from the Ministry of Education. We released our junior and senior pack, so we distributed them to all schools in England in 2015 and also 2010. So the curriculum was changed in 2014, that's why we've done it again. We have an online teacher training module and then we released our um, released, we launched our Train the Trainer workshops in 2006. Um, and we also had nice endorsement 2016-17, which is really great. So we, you know, we were pushing really hard to get our, our resources in many schools as possible. And Train the Trainer is our biggest asset for that. So what we do is we either invite educators or local authorities to come to our site or we visit them as long as they've got about 10 people. And we train them on their activities and then they complete a approved educator test and then they're you know, we know they've got the knowledge to do these activities and then they can train their colleagues and this is really great so we've trained about 120 trainers so far and since 2016 and we're now investigating the use of virtual training for this as well so again if anyone is interested in being trained on our activities reach out and we will happily organize something with you our social media as well you know we've got everything on there we use twitter facebook youtube We've also been investigating Snapchat because kids absolutely love Snapchat. They're using it more than Facebook now. Um, so we do Snapchat filters at different events that we go to so people can take like a super bug selfie or antibiotic selfie. And again, if you want to learn more about ebook, we have a range of publications on our resources to really emphasize how much we evaluate them and the importance of you know formative evaluation and developing really effective resources. Um, so because we're close to time, I'm going to sort of skip over the EU implementation. This is just a nice little um, thing that you can find on the website and just finish off with our future. So we have lots of really exciting things planned. We've got the website update coming. Kath on my team is going to be developing a new lesson on the microbiome. And um, we're we've just now started working with the girl guides to try and do a new outdoor active learning activity um, and then we're doing our train the trainer so yeah lots of good things and one thing is as well we're also launching ETAN which is our European teacher advisor network to really increase implementation of ebook and skills so yeah busy busy project small team very exciting <laughs> and I think that's it for me brilliant thank you so much um, I think you know, one just important thing from today will be everybody going away from this and just think and, and kind of absorbing it and thinking about what, how we, how we can use this. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, clearly you've got so many different facets and, and, and approaches, you know, schools, girl guiding, home, um, <laughs> communities. It's brilliant. I think it should reach lots of children. I was just thinking, for example, whether you know GP practices a lot of them have um, computers in the waiting room don't they with mm -hmm. information and this would be mm -hmm. the kind of thing that they could have for children to play on while they're waiting to see the doctor definitely um, that's actually you know, been our French partners been introducing that in France so that's exactly yeah 
good mind think alike. Yeah, that seems. Um, uh, and yes, I can I can see a comments popped up from Sharon about the um, you know the ED waiting room. Yeah. Um, and actually, that again in our hospital, I can think we we just we've invested in some iPads with some sort of orientation stuff for kids to learn what's going to happen to them whilst they're in ED. But actually, that their wait is often longer than that program <laughs> runs for. So <laughs> the, these kinds of opportunities, I think, would be really um, really good. I mean, it's it, it's I think it's sort of from the Meds IQ perspective where we're looking at how we can in, engage families and young people with medicines this is going one uh, uh, not one step quite a few steps further by saying actually mm -hmm. you've got to fully understand you know embed this knowledge in the basic science training for everybody um so i, I mean i think it's fabulous any anybody else got any comments let me see that's a few comments have come up on the chat. Um, uh, I guess, yes, we're approaching two o'clock, so um, Tola has to leave. Mm -hmm. But Sharon's talked about maybe collaborating with worried mums. I mean, I think definitely getting the getting through social media out, out to parents yeah. would be very powerful. Yeah, that's, um, that is one thing we, we don't do as well on being able to channel reach those channels like the general public we do struggle a bit we're good with educators so it's i mean what do you guys think like what channels should we be talking to mums and parents on should it just be social media or is there i think that's things? where a lot of them are but whether you know things like mumsnet and the equivalent facebook groups and stuff where there's a huge amount of conversation happening you know all my child gets lots of coughs and colds, why? Or, yeah. I wonder, you know, my GP wouldn't give me antibiotics and I really think I need them. Um, and whether you can somehow get this in there. Yeah. Um, it feels like, it, you know, it should be possible, but how you kind of infiltrate in. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I think yeah, so I think what Sharon Sharon's comment here is saying, you know, is, is saying that perhaps getting getting to people when they're worried so i guess that's what yeah. you know you catch people in a and e because actually they've come up worried about their child they're thinking about these things so that's a good moment plus they're a captive yeah. audience See um, that, that, but that is one thing that we struggle because we'll talk to someone give them our content but then do they actually go and use it like did do we convert them it's so hard to convert people when they're interested they'll take an idea but it's you know it's it's a habitual behavioral thing it's it's hard to change people's behaviors I, I it think. really it is and i think also people don't like being you know you have to be really careful in, yeah. in the application that you're not just you're not coming across like a teacher telling them what to do exactly. and they're saying well i'm an independent parent um i can make decisions i mean one of the great things about this is that hope that you can tell children what to do because you see them in school. Yeah. And they may then bring this, bring this home. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think maybe having one of the things that works certainly with the, um, I'm thinking about the healthy, what's it called? Change for life. Is that the mm -hmm. healthy eating one? Mm -hmm. Where there was, they did a really popular one with Disney characters where the children all got a little stopwatch and loads of activities to do at home and yeah. posted but it was all aimed on activities to do in the house so oh, okay. you kind of have nice. to engage your the families yeah. so a bit like the top trumps if yeah. you know kids came home with the top trumps or had posters that they completed at home yeah to bring no, back definitely. in those you know kind of putting that's quite a good way of engaging families no that is a really yeah i think once we have so we're getting like a thousand packs first of the the game printed and i think that'll be really good to give to kids because right now like you know we've laminated it and cut it out and it just doesn't look you know kids are used to high-end cool board games so we're trying to get our content a bit more shiny yeah it's true i think people unfortunately they everyone does have quite a high standard of yeah what things should look like exactly you know, yeah. 
professional um otherwise they they don't kind of buy it but actually i mean i'm i'm phoning in from home surrounded by board games from my family <laughs> just looking at them actually there's quite a few where you could kind i think you, you could adapt a any kind of fun board game you know i'm thinking like we the kids are currently really into kaplunk the one where marbles fall down oh uh, yeah i love kaplunk that's fun and actually if you kind of took the concept of the marbles being bacteria and the mm -hmm. sticks being all the different things we use to protect ourselves against bacteria yeah you know you could you you could make versions of common games yeah which is always the easiest yeah no that's that's a really good idea um let me see are there any other comments um uh, Sharon's also said about sort of joint activities in the waiting room. Yes, yeah, so I suppose if you're engaging families, both the yep. children, also the parents, you're, I think the, the joint activities is probably the way to get to adults. Because yep. otherwise they're not, I think you're right, they're not going to be interested, but they might be interested if their children make them, <laughs> make yeah, them do it. Um, can I, can uh, I say that uh, sorry, Alice, this is Kasia. Um, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, Carla, for this presentation, because I feel that I learned a lot too, and I think that I should be consulting eBug on some of the resources myself, because, for example, things uh, around fridge organizing were completely new <laughs> um, and revolutionary to me. Um, no one's ever taught me that. Uh, but I listened uh, with interest to the discussion about how to get these resources to parents, you know, to worry parents. Um, mm -hmm. I think that one, one thing that immediately came to my mind is, I don't know whether you're familiar with a website called Medicines for Children. Um, yes, I've definitely heard of that before. Okay, so it's actually a website that is... Uh, developed and run here from RCPCH and it's aimed at parents. It's, you know, it's it's kind of, it's a website where they can find out about their children's medications uh, in a way that's mm -hmm. more accessible than, uh, you know, the, okay. the, the, the traditional medication leaflets. And I will definitely be highlighting um, eBug to, um, to the Medicines for Children um, you know, project coordinator and, and project board because I think that it's an amazing resource to be highlighted on their website, which I understand is used by a lot of parents. They get something like, you know, a million hits a year or something like oh that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that this is really relevant information to, to parents and I'll be recommending that they highlight it um, on Medicines for Children. If that, I mean, if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, of course. I'll, yeah, I'll, definitely. I'll see what they say and I'll let you know. But um, I think that would definitely be one of the ways to get to, you know, to a parent um, network. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's definitely a channel that we need to explore. And you know what? I'm going to use that excuse that everyone uses. It's just time. It's just yeah. it's not on our it's not on our priority list right now. And it's we have so many ideas and it's like, oh, we don't have time for that. <laughs> so. I wish we had all the time in the world. Yes, I think that's the problem with all the projects, but this is where collaboration is so beautiful and linking up, yeah. um, you know, like, like we're doing today, um, because, because I think that there are ways uh, which are extremely time consuming when you're trying to do them on your own, but you know, yeah. sometimes there are kind of ready-made solutions out there that can help yeah. out. So um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing that we, that we managed to, to link up. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. And I'm sorry that I was a bit late in um, sending materials, but it was really good to present today. No, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining I'm gonna us. Put, I'm going to put, put my camera on so I can say bye with my face. So <laughs> I know how to do this. Oh, pretty. Is it working? Oh, Yay, yes. can you see? That you can Yay. Oh. <laughs> oh, I just realized I'm waving at you, and you're, um, but you obviously can't see me, so that's slightly wasted yeah. on you. Uh, but oh, nice to see you. Thank you so much, Carla. No problem. And hopefully we'll we'll catch base. We'll touch base again soon.
Yeah, I would love some of your top trumps for, for the hospital. I think that would be, I think kids would really. Yeah, just reach out and we can send them over. So that's no problem. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, so, oh. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Add for anyone who's still online um, that uh, if, you, you, you know, we will obviously, we publicized eBug before in our MedZQ bulletin, but we'll do so again and we'll encourage everybody to contact you if that's okay. Um, Perfect. Yeah, uh, just give them the email address. That's fine. Great. Okay. Bye. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much. Bye bye. 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 Brilliant. Thanks, Kasha. Thank you, Alice. I think uh, we're the only ones still online, unless Jane is still with us. No, I think Jane had to go. She sent me a text. Um, but that was great. Yes. Um, perfect.